Dr. Dennis Holmes is an internationally renowned breast surgeon specializing in the surgical treatment of breast cancer and non-cancerous breast conditions. He has dedicated his career to breast cancer treatment innovation to reduce the burden of breast cancer care. Dr. Holmes is a warm, caring breast surgeon who possesses the expertise, empathy and patience to help each patient find a breast cancer solution that suits her physically and emotionally, while providing the best possible cancer control. Dr. Holmes, what inspired you to pursue medicine? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, it started when I was a young boy. I had some health issues and uh, spent more time than any boy would like at the hospital. But through that experience, I had the opportunity to interact with many health care providers who really changed my life, and I wanted to be a part of that, and that's why I chose this as a career. So you wanted to make a difference since you were a kid? Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, when someone faces a, a health condition, it's a life crisis often. Uh, and you yearn to get better, you yearn to, to, turn, to return to normal, but uh, you know, it's, it, it takes many people in many cases to get you to that point. And from, at least in my own case, I realized that I wanted to be a part of the solution for someone else because the others were the solution for me. What can you tell our viewers about the target clinical trial and of course the first trial that you've pioneered? Well, this is a very exciting topic for me, the, the target trial, because it was uh, the idea of the target is that it's a way of giving radiation during surgery as a single treatment. Uh, and when I first learned about it in 2002, it was just an idea that was being considered for clinical trial. Ultimately, a trial was developed uh, that what we call a randomized trial, where we enrolled women into the study, half of which would receive the regular type of radiation, which is given as a daily treatment for six weeks, and then the other half would receive the intraoperative radiotherapy treatment as a single treatment given during surgery. It's a randomized trial. Women could not choose. It was all done by random. And so the idea was to treat the two groups of women and then to follow their outcome over now 12 years. Uh, and we now know that the two treatments are equal. The question all along was, will it truly, with this new treatment called TARGET, be as effective as regular radiation therapy? But uh, I'm happy to say that it is. You know, you start a clinical trial, you never really know how it's going to turn out. Sometimes you end up with results that aren't so favorable. Uh, but this is such an important uh, uh, development that we can give, you know, reduce six weeks of radiation to a 30-minute treatment during surgery. That I think it's one of the most important developments in modern breast cancer surgery, radiation. So as you asked about the, the FROST trial, which is another, I think, potentially game-changing trial uh, that will provide a basis for, again, changing how we treat breast cancer today. FROST uh, refers to freezing alone instead of removal of small tumors, F-R-O-S-T. And it's the name of a clinical trial that's evaluating a treatment called cryoablation. Cryo meaning cold, ablation meaning removal or treatment. We're using basically freezing to treat breast cancers. We did some early studies in the maybe 2010, 2015 timeframe where we treated women with cryoablation. We inserted a needle and froze a tumor uh, and then took them to surgery to prove that we could actually kill the tumor. And that result actually turned out quite well. That gave us the confidence to move to the next phase of the study, which is the FROST trial, which I developed and, and then made available in various places across the country as part of a multi-center trial. The question on the FROST trial is, can we use cryoablation alone as a standalone treatment, or should I say as an alternative to surgery for women with small breast cancers? So a woman would come to the office, she'd have local anesthetic injected, we would insert a needle called the cryoprobe through the center of the tumor, uh, we'll then freeze a tumor in two different cycles, like 10-minute freeze, 8-minute thaw, 10-minute freeze, for example. Uh, and then once the treatment is done, we simply withdraw the needle, apply a Band-Aid to the wound, which is just a skin puncture, and then we send the patient home. She can drive herself in, she can drive herself home, and that's, I think, one day will be a new way, or a new way for some women to undergo breast cancer treatment. What is the significance and the overall uh, impact of the breast cancer awareness in the month of October? Well, it's a very special month for breast surgeons, but also for women, because it's the time of year when we can really focus on the importance of screening 
to facilitate early detection. Of course, we don't want women to ever be diagnosed with breast cancer, but the most important aspect of being diagnosed is being diagnosed at the earliest possible stage when the disease is potentially curative and when the treatments that we offer have the least burden. So October is the month that we've chosen to, to bring attention to the importance of breast cancer as, an, as a health condition, but also the importance of screening. It also has, provides an opportunity for us to sort of coordinate fundraising efforts so that we can raise money for research that looks at the you know, development of cure and uh, research and the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of breast cancer. What can the community at large do to provide resources to Adventist Health Glendale? Uh, one of the most important things that people can do is to volunteer at the hospital. They can work at the front desk, provide support for patients that are undergoing treatment. There are various ways, just contact the hospital volunteer office and they'll plug you in at something that seems right, that fits what you're interested in. But I don't want to mention that one of the other important ways that they can support the hospital is to support the foundation because the foundation funds many activities, not all of which we can bill for, but we can provide services and care for patients and community, including outreach, which is something that you know, is really crucial to continuing the relationship that a hospital should have with the population that it serves. My mission as a breast cancer surgeon is to find kinder, gentler treatments that are effective at treating breast cancer. There are two procedures that are changing the way that we treat cancer growth. The first is intraoperative radiotherapy, which is a way of delivering radiation therapy during surgery. You can give the treatment in 30 minutes instead of 30 days. And so the tumor comes out in one piece with a rim of normal tissue around it. This is a tumor coming out. The tumor surrounded by fat. So what you see is fat and breast tissue surrounding the breast tumor. The next thing that we're doing is selecting the applicator that best fits the surgical cavity. This device is used to shape the breast tissue around the radiation source. So now the interbeam is positioned within the center of the lumpectomy cavity to ensure that radiation delivery is equal in all directions around the cavity. We've just concluded the procedure. 20 minutes instead of 30 days. The next procedure is frost, or tumor cryoablation. So we'll demonstrate how the freezing process works by first inserting the end of the cryoprobe into saline. So that's the ice ball that forms around the cryoprobe. That's the ice ball that also forms within the breast to kill the cancer. So now you see the cryoprobe entering the tumor, passing through the tumor. Now the cryoprobe is in position, and we're about to begin the cryoablation procedure. What happens as the tumor freezes, and as the tissue freezes, is that it becomes less visible to see. The image turns to a dark hole. After the second thaw, the procedure is completed. What is Adventist Health Glendale doing to be at the forefront of breast cancer prevention? So, Asha, that's actually one of the most exciting things to talk about. Uh, at, here at Adventist Health Glendale, we have the ability now to screen patients with what's called 3D mammography or tomosynthesis. It's actually the most advanced way of screening mammography. It's more uh, sensitive for detecting breast cancer. It's particularly sensitive in dense breasts, which are often a challenge for screening, uh, and it's what we offer here routinely. So if someone is looking for screening and they want the best access, the best uh, method of screening for breast cancer, then that would be the way to do so. 3D mammography or tomosynthesis. So we can say that 3D is, be is better and more accurate? Three, in fact, y your question is, is 3D mammography better and more accurate? The answer is yes, that it, it finds more cancers. And there's also kind of the problem that women often have, they're going for screening, they'll be called back to have additional studies done because the first set of screening mammograms weren't clear enough. Well, as it turns out, 3D mammography, which captures more information at the initial screening, reduces the callback rate. That's what we call that, the callback rate. So there's better detection in initial evaluation and less need to return for a reassessment of the mammograms when the first ones weren't diagnostic enough. What is more important in cancer treatment, Dr. Holmes? Well, cancer treatment is a multi-modality therapy. That means that it, it requires multiple modes of treatment in order to provide comprehensive care. Uh, it starts with surgery in many cases, and in many cases it also requires radiotherapy. But drug therapy is also an important treatment as well. The purpose of surgery is to remove the cancer where it is found, like a lump in the breast. Uh, radiation is given to reduce the chances of that cancer recurring 
where it was found. So we would radiate the breast to prevent breast cancer from occurring within the breast. But during the time that an invasive cancer has had to grow within the breast, there are opportunities for it to spread from beyond the breast to perhaps the lymph nodes or even further to the lung or liver or bone. Uh, even when we do extensive scans, you know, CAT scans, PET scans, we might not be able to detect those early deposits of cancer that have metastasized to other parts of the body. So we have to use some type of medication therapy, a drug therapy, that's given to treat cancer wherever else it might have gone in the body. So there's both the local and treatment, which is breast radiotherapy and surgery, and the systemic treatment using some sort of drug. Now, the drugs generally categorize as chemotherapy and non-chemotherapy, that's how most people think of them. Uh, chemotherapy, which requires an IV, and then the, the non-chemotherapy one, which are those that could be taken as a pill. Uh, increasingly, we're finding ways to treat breast cancer with less toxic therapies and less aggressive therapies and less need for chemotherapies. Uh, in particular, uh, breast cancers that are estrogen sensitive, which is actually the majority of breast cancers, increasingly we can treat them only with an anti-estrogen pill. Even if they're advanced stage, we're shifting to treat them, treating them with anti-cancer pills and some other new pill forms of medications that have been developed. So for the average woman who sort of, you know, fears chemotherapy because of its side effects or the impact of hair loss and other things, I think, you know, that it won't be completely thing, it won't completely become a thing of the past, but we'll find that we're using less and less chemotherapy in the future. And Dr. Holmes, what is uh, your message to the community? Marsha, my message just to the community is to emphasize two things. Number one, uh, early detection is really important. And early detection only comes about from screening. That is, women need to know that at the age of 40, if they have average risk of breast cancer, that they should start screening yearly. And if they're in a family where there's a high risk of breast cancer, they should also consider screening at an earlier age because we know that the cancers in high-risk families can begin to appear before the age of 40. So screening is the most important thing one can do to make sure that if they're diagnosed, they're diagnosed at the earliest possible stage. The second thing that I want them to know is that there are a lot of clinicians like myself, surgeons and, and other specialists, that are working to find safer, more effective ways of treating breast cancer that, have, uh, that are effective, but that have less treatment burden. So shorter treatment times, more targeted therapy, more personalized therapy, better long-term survival, and better quality of life. So that a diagnosis of cancer doesn't become a thing that alters their life in some way from which they can't recover. We want it to be an inconvenience, uh, so, but one from which you can recover to get back to feeling, to living the same life, if not better life than you did before you had a diagnosis of breast cancer. Thank you, Dr. Holmes, for uh, making time for this sit-down interview. I know you have a very busy schedule. As a matter of fact, in a couple of minutes, you're scheduled for another surgery, so thank you. Thank you, Asha. This has been a lot of fun, uh, and more importantly, it's been such an important message to give to the community, so thank you for allowing me to participate in this.